That's right, Tulitha. We are keeping a close eye on those U.S. congressional races. Republicans want to keep their majority, while Democrats are trying to flip 23 seats to gain power. So far tonight, the left has gained three seats, the latest in Florida, where Democrat Debbie Mercarsel Powell beat Republican Representative Carlos Curbelo. The second seat that flipped is also in Florida. Right now, you're looking at it. Donna Shalala beat Republican Maria Salazar. Shalala served as Secretary of Health and Human Services under President Clinton. She won in Miami in a district there that has traditionally been in Republican hands. And in Virginia, Democrat Jennifer Wexton defeated two-term Republican incumbent Barbara Comstock. The 10th district has a high number of federal workers and is one of the wealthiest districts in the country. It also has a large number of independent, highly educated female voters who have been particularly opposed to President Trump. And this just in, we have a fourth flip reported by the Associated Press. This is in Pittsburgh, where freshman Democratic Representative Connor Lamb has beaten three-term GOP Representative Keith Rothfuss. We do expect to see more flips again with these national networks predicting that the Democrats will take back the U.S. House of Representatives. Kenny, Talitha. All right, Brianna, thank you very much. And right on cue, 10 o'clock, polls have been closed for a few hours. Now we're starting to see these results come in fast and furious. Want to begin now with our trip around the Piedmont Triad and checking in with our teams in the field. Let's go now to Janae Lewis, has, who has been paying very close attention to this 13th district race, bringing lots of money in. Janae is alive at uh, uh, Ted Bud's campaign uh, with lots of people there for his watch party. And we're here at Winmog. As you can hear, people are starting to cheer as those results come in nationwide. As for this particular race, results are coming in quick, fast, and in a hurry. I refreshed the website just before stepping into this live shot. 70% of precincts had reported. Now, what's significant to know is that only a 100 of the precincts in Guilford County had reported. There's still more than 60 that still have left to send in results. That's significant because Guilford County tends to lean more democratic. So while Ted Budd seems to be pulling away somewhat in this race, it's going to be very close as those results continue to come in. We had a chance to speak to him earlier. He says that he's been up since six o'clock this morning, just trying to get that last push. And he's hoping that he's done enough to secure a win here tonight. We are expected to hear from him at any moment with an update. Of course, he and his team are closely monitoring the situation with that. When we spoke to him earlier, he called Kathy Manning a formidable opponent. It. He said that they have run a very close and tight race. We're going to send things over now to our Margaret Johnson, who has been following and tracking that race in Greensboro right now. Well, good evening here. We are inside the Greensboro Coliseum, and we are still waiting for the results of the Manning uh, Ted Budd race. Uh, even though the latest numbers show her trailing just a little bit, I'm here with one of her supporters. Her name just happens to be Kathy as well. How are you feeling at this point? Your candidate is trailing Ted Budd. I am feeling like until every vote is counted, I have every confidence in Kathy Manning. She has put herself into this race when she didn't have to do that but she wants to see change. She wants to see uh, this district start um, putting emphasis on the priorities that the voters are identifying, like better health care, lower prescription drugs. I have so much confidence in Kathy Manning's ability to bring people together to uh, stop all of the dissension that we're seeing in Washington. Do you think she can make up the numbers uh, at this point in the night? I, you know, I haven't seen the numbers, so I don't know what precincts are reporting, but I will, as I said, I will have confidence in her ability to win this election. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. You know, we did talk to Kathy Manning a little bit earlier in this, this evening when she was out campaigning trying to reach those voters uh, at the last minute. And I asked her if she was feeling lucky tonight, and she said that she did. She felt like uh, she, was one, she was going to win, that they had knocked on all of the doors, and that they would come out victorious tonight. Of course, we'll have to wait and see until all of those numbers are in before we can say whether she wins or loses. That's the story for, from here for now. I'm Margaret Johnson in Greensboro.
All right, thank you so much, Margo. We've got a lot of numbers coming in from races all around the Piedmont Triad as well. Let's take a look now. Right, let's begin in the North Carolina 5th District. This is where the incumbent Republican Virginia Fox is the projected winner. You see about 55% of the precincts reporting there. The AP calling this one in favor of Congresswoman Fox. This will be her eighth term. She defeated Congresswoman, or excuse me, hopeful Congresswoman D.D. Adams, the Democratic challenger, Virginia Fox, the winner there. And when it comes to the state district number 30, one of the most influential politicians in the state has come up big yet again. You've seen his name in lots of ads. You've seen him behind big pushes like the uh, House Bill 2 as well. For the 30th district, he comes up big winning Phil Berger, District 30. Some local sheriff's races as well, including a new sheriff officially now in Randolph County. Greg Seabolt, the Republican, winning handily over Libertarian Eric Hicks. And now to the 6th District, where Mark Walker is the big winner. He is the incumbent former pastor in Greensboro. Let's send things over to Brianna Connor for a closer look at the breakdown of this race. Brianna. Yeah, that's right, Talitha. This was a race that Mark Walker was expected to win, being the incumbent and, of course, being in a Republican district. So no big surprise there, although it was tight for just a moment. You see here he won with 57 percent of the vote. He is the projected winner now. You see that his uh, uh, opponent, Ryan Watts, got about 43 percent of the vote with 103,006 Right now, we've got 68% of the precincts reporting, but again, this has been called for Mark Walker. Our Mallory, uh, our Mallory is at his uh, party right now. Let's check in with her to see what he and his supporters are saying. Yeah, Brianna, Congressman Mark Walker thanking his supporters tonight, saying that he is ready to start working and that that work will begin tomorrow. We are at a private watch party here at Summerfield Farms in Guilford County. Congressman Mark Walker, as you said, beating Democratic candidate newcomer Ryan Watts. This will be the congressman's third term. He says he's excited to continue his grassroots efforts here, focusing on major issues, including Social Security and immigration. He tells us he He's anxious to continue his work, especially after talking with voters during his campaign. Well, I think we want to make sure that a lot of things that we've heard in the news, maybe from our opponents, is that Republicans don't care about pre-existing conditions. We already passed uh, one particular piece of legislation that worked with those. Let's go back and make sure that we're messaging and communicating that we care about people pre-existing conditions. We've got some things with the immigration that we've got to work out, both in the interior enforcement, but also border security. We can work on both those things. And Now this private party here at Summerfield Farms has pretty much cleared out, but there is still a group here. You can see if we show to my right here, uh, that is um, Guilford County Sheriff's uh, Republican incumbent B.J. Barnes sitting at the table watching these numbers coming in. It's a very close race right now, so there are certainly still folks standing around watching as these numbers continue to come in tonight. Reporting live in Guilford County, Mallory Lane, WXII 12 News. Thank you so much, Mallory. We want to go back to the 5th District, all encompassing about 11 different counties here, where Virginia Fox turned out some big numbers here and is now going to take place in seeking her 8th term out of the 5th District. Let's go live now to Kirsten Gutierrez. She is standing by with reaction to another victory for Congresswoman Fox. Kirsten. I'm here in Winston-Salem with Dee Dee Adams and now just hearing this news that Virginia Fox is called to win this race. Let's head over to Dee Dee and see what her reaction is. What's your reaction to this prediction? Well, it's surreal for me, but we ran a very good competitive race. We did something that a lot of people thought we couldn't do. And here in Forsyth County, the, the voters here are saying they want some change. So I'm happy about the numbers here in Forsyth County. But again, you know, this is not just a moment in time. This is a movement. So all these people, this diverse crowd that you see here, this represents North Carolina and the 5th District. So I'm happy with what I did. You know, we roll up our sleeves and we start to work on something else at the first of the year. Again, I want to thank all of the supporters, all the voters, all of my staff, all the team, all the people that came and went. To help DD, you know, campaign for DD Adams. I appreciate it. Now, what's next for you? 
Well, I'm, I got a job to do. Remember, I'm a city councilwoman here in Winston-Salem, almost a decade. I love my job. Uh, I got to go to work tomorrow. I got to catch a plane out of Charlotte and go to a conference that represents the interests of cities and towns. So I'll just keep t doing what I do, and I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, we'll take it from there. Thank you so much, Dee Dee Adams. Now, we also reached out to Congressman Fox, and she was not able to do an interview tonight. In Winston-Salem, Kirsten Gutierrez, WXI 12 News. Kirsten, thank you very much. Transitioning now from the federal level, United States House of Representatives now down to the state level and in particular the state Senate. Yeah, we're talking about Senator Phil Berger declaring a victory around 845 tonight. Um, we do know that the numbers are showing right here with 76% of the precincts reporting. Phil Berger with a big lead of 62% of the vote, considered to be one of the most influential politicians in the state. Let's send things over now to Steve King, who is with his campaign at the watch party there. Steve. Well, the watch party, as you can see, has ended here at the Whitcomb Student Center in Wentworth. Now, State Senator Phil Berger did declare victory around 845. Like you said, he said that he was confident that he was going to get that victory at that time around 845 because he had 60 percent of the vote and all of the precincts in Rockingham County had reported the biggest county in his district. Now, Senator Berger, who will soon serve his 10th term in the state Senate most likely, says he's looking forward to continuing the work the General Assembly has done since he's been Senate President pro tem. Here's his message after declaring victory tonight. The voters have uh, basically, uh, you know, said that, that they understand what we've been doing, that uh, they approve of what we've been doing, uh, and that uh, they have not uh, been willing to listen to a campaign that uh, is based uh, primarily on misinformation, disinformation, and in some instances outright lies. So, uh, so I'm very pleased that, uh, that we see that result. Jen Mangrum, a Democratic political newcomer, lost the race for the 30th Senate District tonight. She first announced her candidacy in 2017, moving from Greensboro to Reedsville when mapmakers redrew the district. And she overcame that challenge, claiming that she didn't live in the district. Tonight, she reflected on her entire campaign before the race was called. In the first hearing, I said, I'm staying here, and if I don't win, I'm running in 2020. Um, so there's going to be a lot more of me. Um, the governor called me earlier tonight and he said, um, you're the face of North Carolina's future. And it was very exciting to hear and he knows that this is just the beginning. Reporting live in Wentworth, Steve King, WXII 12 News. Thank you so much, Steve. Voters coming out in very big numbers across the nation and especially here in North Carolina as well. Still ahead, we'll be checking in with political analyst John Dynan from Wake Forest University as the results continue to come in. We'll also talk about those amendments, six of them appearing all over ballots across the state of North Carolina. We're just getting started tonight at 10 o'clock on the Triad CW. Commitment 2018 coverage continues after this.